It's the first night game of the 2013 baseball season. It's a great night for baseball as the Buccos take on the Chicago Cubs in game two of the opening three game series homestand before the Pirates hit the road. Greg Brown, Bob Walk with you. Chilly night. But uh, we're warming up to baseball once again, and we're going to get a chance to see Wandy Rodriguez make his uh, 2013 debut, Bob. Well, Wandy's already got a little action in this year. Uh, he's been on the field early on in the World Baseball Classic, where he was pitching in games that were full of uh, pride and passion. So he's had that adrenaline pumping through his veins already, pitched very well for the Dominican Republic in the World Baseball Classic. So I gotta believe that even though this is his first game of the season, he's gonna be more like it's, uh, you know, kind of like May or something. I, he's already been out there with games on the line. Well, he historically has had good Aprils, and Robbie Insmikowski has more on that. Robbie? Yeah, Greg. Indeed, Wandy Rodriguez. This is nothing new. Early season success for Wandy Rodriguez. And Bob talked a moment ago about the World Baseball Classic. Clint Hurdle has been in touch with the guys from the Dominican Republic throughout that time to make sure that Wandy Rodriguez was on his normal schedule. And when you look at the numbers for Wandy Rodriguez and what he's done in the month of April last season, he was unbelievable. He was a member of the Houston Astros at that time. So the Pirates have never had Wandy, uh, Wandy in the month of April, but in his career. That's pretty indicative, Greg, of what Wandy Rodriguez has done. A career ERA under three in the first month of his career. We'll see how he starts off here in April 2013. All right, looking forward to that, Robbie. And new to Cubby Blue is tonight's Chicago Cubs starter, veteran right-hander Edwin Jackson. He is 4-0 lifetime in six career starts against the Pirates. It's Edwin against Wandy, game two of the season, coming up next. Before the Pirates head out west, take on the Dodgers over the weekend and then the Diamondbacks next week. Wandy Rodriguez on the mound for the Pirates, traded over from the Astros last summer, faces this Dale Swaim lineup. The skipper of the Chicago Cubs has Dave Sapelt leading off, then Starlet Castro and Anthony Rizzo. Rizzo with five career homers in 14 games against Pittsburgh. Of course, homer to opening day. Alfonso Siriano hits cleanup, and it's Scott Harrison, the veteran, in right. 
Wellington Castillo had a couple of hits opening day. Brent Lillibridge, former Pirate farmhand at third base. Alberto Gonzalez is at second. And then Edwin Jackson takes the mound for the Cubs. You know, Wande's uh, numbers last year. Hey, look at that 376 ERA over 200 innings. I mean, that's uh, that's Wande year after year. He's always very steady. You know, maybe not uh, putting up the numbers that get him, uh, as, you know, everybody looking and talking Cy Young and that sort of thing. But he is about one of the most dependable pitchers in this league over the last five or six years that you could want. And we're underway. A little bit low to Dave Sapelt. He's not in the lineup opening day as uh, Swain went with a bunch of left-handed hitters against the righty. And here against the lefty. Sapelt takes a strike. Former Cincinnati Red faces the former Houston Astro. And it's driven deep to the track. On away. So McCutcheon makes the catch. A couple of steps shy of the warning track. He is flanked in the outfield by Starling Marte and left. Garrett Jones once again gets the start in right field. On the left side of the Pirate infield, Pedro Alvarez, Clint Barmas, Neil Walker at second, Gabby Sanchez at first, and Russell Martin catching Juan D. Rodriguez. Clint Barmas, former teammate of Rodriguez with the uh, Astros a couple of years ago. Starling Castro, the Cubs shortstop. Takes ball one. Well, he's really not a sinker ball type guy, but he throws so many curveballs. He, and as a shortstop third baseman, you're going to get a lot of guys hooking that curveball over your direction. You've got to be ready, especially Pedro down at third base. The shot at Pedro standing in the only sunshine we have here. Toward the line and right, Jones long run makes the catch. Two fly balls, one to center, and Castro looking back at the replay on the scoreboard. He's looking to see if he can see where that pitch was. So Wanda Rodriguez, uh, 34 years old. One of the things you get nowadays, big league ballpark, the instant feedback. Oh. In the most part, if you walk down uh, behind the dugouts, they'll have you know, a station where you can watch your last at bat immediately. A good pitch yeah. inside. I like it. One ball, one strike. A shift is on. Rizzo's been uh, hitting some home runs against us in his young career. He sees an 0-1 fastball way off the plate. A ball and two strikes. Big home run for Anthony Rizzo. First inning, one on, one out against A.J. Burnett. Crushed it. It looked like that pitch uh, fastball was on the outside half of the plate. Oh, yeah, that uh, barrel of the bat sailing past Gabby Sanchez. And I bring that up uh, about it being on the outside half of the plate. That's another reason why you have to throw Rizzo hard stuff inside. You want that outside part of the plate for yourself. There's a fastball inside. Black and Decker. Black and Decker? Yeah, they make saws. Sometimes just run into a buzzsaw. <laughs> There's A.J. Burnett. Struck out 10 batters. Breaking ball misses. Five and two thirds innings for A.J. Burnett. 10 strikeouts opening day. Tied for the most ever by Pirate starter on opening day. And just misses. Three and two now on Anthony Rizzo. 15 homers last year in 87 games with the Cubs. And that misses. Two out walk to Rizzo. Well, Rizzo, he, he showed some patience. He, he took a couple of real close pitches there at the end. You never know for sure, though, when, when guys are taking those close pitches because they could have just been fooled. And they, they couldn't have swung at him if they wanted to. You lock him up, and they get the benefit of the call. Well, our day key matchup of the day, Wandy Rodriguez against Alfonso Soriano, career 122 batter against Wandy Rodriguez. 
real, but foul. I was going to say it just before he hit that pitch. It's it, it, it's kind of confusing to me and why Wandy has such success, such, such success against Soriano because Soriano is an excellent fastball hitter, and Wandy throws him a lot of fastballs. Wandy throws everybody a lot of fastballs. Set up that curveball. Oh, one one. And there is the curveball. You get the, the fastball pulled hard and then came back with the hook. And you see Soriano, he doesn't get to hit fastballs. Everybody in the league knows that you don't want to throw him that that fastball. Of course, Pedro Alvarez, you can see he's yeah. on that list too. Wandy doesn't mind. Looks like he's going to go fastball in. Up and in. And the Pirates uh, employing that uh, overshift with a right hand hitter as well. It's starting to become more popular around baseball now. You know, Wandy Rodriguez, the way he pitches, he, he's a good guy for Jeff Locke to watch. They have a similar type of uh, fastballs, high 80s, a touch low 90 every now and then. Not get Soriano to chase two and two. But the way Wanda uses that fastball, he like he'll go upstairs, bring it in. He'll try to just paint uh, for a strike three on the outside corner. Jeff Locke, there he is. He'll make his uh, debut on Sunday in L.A. Two and two, Rizzo aboard, two outs. And to right, Jones. That'll do it. Bucks will come to bat against Edwin Jackson. Home half of the first. Starling Marte, Garrett Jones, Andrew McCutcheon. Jones, by the way, in 55 career games, 10 homers. Pedro Alvarez hits cleanup. Gabby Sanchez, Neil Walker followed, and it's Russell Martin, Clint Barmas, and Wandy Rodriguez. And when Jackson signed over the winter, Bob is a free agent. Yeah, he's uh, got a number of different suitcases, doesn't he? He really bounces around a lot of different teams. Good fastball, hard slider. I think he has a curveball to change, but I've never seen him throw. First pitch strike. He was with the Nationals last year, so Cubs is 18 in his last nine years. 10 and 11 last season, 4.03 ERA. Starling Marte, who was 0 for 3 opening day with a walk in the bottom of the first inning. One ball, one strike. That slider. Twenty nine years old, Edwin Jackson. One and two on Marte. Knox 
takes his helmet off. Came Foul off. ball. Came off. Looked like his knee up. Boom, boom. Misses. Two and two on Marte. And down on strikes. So Edwin Jackson, who struck out 168 and 190 innings last year, comes that slider again. He chases after it as it was right at the very bottom of the strike zone. That basically is the game with Jackson. You got that pitch in the fastball. He'll try to crowd, I think, everybody. Well, the right handers anyway with that fastball. See if he can get some jam shots. If you get caught looking, slider. And he puts that fastball in the inside corner or even the inside half the plate. He's going to get some labels tonight. Oh, and 1 2 out in front of Garrett Jones. Jones was 0 for 4 opening day. Look at Jones, Alvarez, Walker. Those are the three guys that I'm looking for long balls from today. And then overshift. And back to back strikeouts to start things here for Edwin Jackson. Another chase of the breaking ball. Through the last three seasons, Andrew McCutcheon's first home runs of those seasons against Edwin Jackson. They ate last year. First home run for McCutcheon. April 11, 2010 when Jackson was pitching for the Diamondbacks. This one in Phoenix. McCutcheon's first home run that season. Isn't that amazing that the season he had last year to hit a home run until May? That is absolutely amazing. Ended up with 31 home runs. His first one didn't come till the first week of May. Chance to go in the clubhouse earlier. Congratulate him on the gold and silver that he picked up out on the field in the opening day ceremonies. By the way, nice job. Rough conditions. <laughs> Thank you. Just wind and snow. <laughs> Foul ball. Should have played that Burl Eyes Christmas song. Yeah, yeah. Silver, silver and gold. gold. Silver. silver and gold. And we were singing it up in the booth while it, you were down there. Uh -huh. Well, that was the highlight, uh, certainly, of uh, one of the big highlights opening day where Andrew McCutcheon being awarded the silver slugger and the gold glove. Very, very busy offseason for him as he collected a lot of hardware. Third in the MVP voting. Certainly, we talked about this a lot second half of the season last year. That uh, Andrew McCutcheon has kind of like put the Pirates on the map. It, uh, not only has he become a household name, not just among, you know, the baseball hardcore people, but I think everybody around the country now definitely knows who Andrew McCutcheon is. And, and he wears that pirate uniform. On the cover of uh, the video game MLB The Show. Big uh, numbers in his career against the Cubs, who again, have three infielders on the left side. Second baseman there, Alberto Gonzalez on the, on the other side of second. Now, he has worked the count full after falling behind Edwin Jackson. Three and two. Jackson striking out the first two. Now facing McCutcheon. Three and two. And toward the line and right. Toward the seats now. And out of play. Hairston and Rizzo giving chase. Two seventy three career hitter against Edwin Jackson is Andrew McCutcheon. And Rizzo and Hairston. Going after that foul ball that winds up in the seats. 
No second baseman on that side. Yeah. Chase. Wow, what a start for Edwin Jackson. He's got that slider working. Strikes out first three batters. Nothing, nothing. Right, Rangers pitcher Yu Darvish almost became the 24th starter in Major League history to pitch a perfect game. Marwin Gonzalez singles to center field with two out in the ninth inning. Darvish struck out 14 Astros in eight and two thirds innings as the Rangers won seven zip. Now back to Greg and Bob at PNC Park, guys. All right, Rob, thanks very much. What a night! What about the, the, the hit? Round ball through his legs. Yeah. Wow. Jeff Samarja was awfully good on Monday. By the way, the Astros were shut out again today by the Texas Rangers. That game with uh, Hugh Darvish near perfect last night. Strike one on Scott Hairston. Mondi Rodriguez, his former club, the Astros, shut out back to back games. It should be out number one. Abby Sanchez puts it away and the four outs retired in the air. Three fly ball outs in the outfield. First inning and this one to Gabby Sanchez. Tweet us. Hashtag Bucks Booth. Send us uh, your pirate questions, comments, observations. Check them out throughout the game. Hashtag Bucks Booth. Send us your tweets. Strike on the catcher, Wellington Castillo. He had a couple of big hits opening day, a couple of doubles, and the second one, a double that scored the third run and ended AJ Burnett's day. 0 and 2. That was, a, was that the high fly that went off the uh, Clemente wall? I believe, yep. Down in the corner. Well, a lot of tail on that one. That had to be the two seamer. Bob walk for mayor. Well, you know what, Bob, DH, I like it. Have you thrown your hat in the ring yet? No, I still have it on my head. <laughs> you like my hat? I like it. In fact, I think you should run uh, free borscht for everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm going to think about yeah. that. Yeah. That one, that's a good call. Yeah. Especially if this weather st stays like this. <laughs> that's that's very. Uh, it's it's almost blast like. But it needs to be well, no, fluorescent. It's, it's, it's not fluorescent orange. No. I, I tried there that. There you go. Key it down a little bit. Two and two on Wellington Castillo. Now the Easter Bunny brought my granddaughters a couple of those hats right there. I've seen those. The parrot hats. Yeah.
Very warm. I tried one on. They are snug. And that that, could that's be very warm. warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got my coat on. I'd like to see him with your hat. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, pop out of play. Almost. There he is. Trying to keep people warm. That'll help. Now, do you think they really enjoy having their hair? Oh, they love it. Another 2 2 pitch to Wellington Castillo. Toward right center. McCutcheon on the move. And that patented knee slide. The well, big he, divot. He, he took out a big chunk yeah. that time. He might be wishing he hadn't uh, touched his knee down. Yeah. He dug in. That might have hurt a little bit. Looks like he's getting up a little worse for wear. Oh, that wasn't too bad. I thought maybe it grabbed his leg. He just slid along there. You know, like, sometimes your knee will dig in and it, it'll, it'll stop. And obviously your body keeps going. Your leg stops. Doesn't feel good. Here's Brent Lillibridge. McCutcheon has gone to that knee slide on so many of those shallow pops and this high pop. Will be caught by Clint Barmas. All six outs. Recorded via the, the pop up. Brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC for the achiever in you. Let's go box. Nothing, nothing. Going to the bottom of the second. Edwin Jackson striking out the first three men he has faced. And now it's Pedro Alvarez who rips one but right at the second baseman. That shift on again. Will Swaim does that a lot. He goes 4 3, Gonzalez to Rizzo. Well, there's going to be some certain situations. That there was opening day where you got to take advantage of that shift and drop down a, 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 a bunt for an easy hit. Yeah, they are giving you an easy single uh, in exchange for you not swinging the bat. And there's certain game time situations where you'll say, okay, I'll take that. Maybe not with Pedro Alvarez early in the ball game. You want him swinging, but uh, you know there came up a couple of times later opening day where you, you're down three runs. It's getting late. You need to, to build an inning. So go ahead and take the.
the free base. You know, bunt it hard down toward third and jog on down the first. And okay, now it's up to the next guy to get something done. But if they're going to give you that free base hit, uh, you know, in exchange for you bunting instead of swinging, then go ahead and go for it. But you got to pick your spots. There are times where it doesn't matter, even if the you know they they got everybody over there and they're giving you the base hit. You still have to go ahead and swing and, and try to get an extra base hit or put one over the fence. Especially that guy there. Talking to Garrett Jones a little bit before the game about that very subject, and I asked him about the times Bob you made mention this the other day on the radio side that uh, we watched him bunt for a hit. Oh, he's done it. He's he done said, it before, I bunted yeah. on the road and. And here at home, he goes, I have no problem, Bunny. He said, leading off an inning, situation calls for it, just like you said, Bob. He said, yeah, I'll, I'll drop down a bunt. Is he, he grounded out to that second base hole three times mm -hmm. opening day, where normally that would have been three singles through the hole. But they put a guy there. So if they're going to put a guy there, well, then go ahead and punish him and take your hit. Gabby Sanchez toward right. Two outs. Well, spend your lunch break watching Pirates baseball. The Bucks and Cubs tomorrow should be really a beautiful day. First pitch, 12:35. You buy the game ticket and Trip Total Media will add five or ten dollars on your ticket. Good at concessions at the ballpark for lunch with the Bucks tickets. Go to Pirates.com/lunch. Again, tomorrow is supposed to be a beautiful day. Walker takes ball one. Got a loaded ticket tonight. I'll be using it on hot chocolate. I think mm -hmm. we have hot chocolate next door, by the way. If you I was not aware of that. Want to send Dash over right. for one? We will be doing that. Two know the count on Walker. He was one for four opening day. And Jeff Samarja was just so good. One of the hits. Two and one. A high fastball on the outside corner. He slapped into left field. That's one of the things that Neil will do quite often. If he gets a pitch up and away, he's a very good at going the other direction, getting the ball to the outfield. That's the ball to the outfield. The first hit belongs to Neil Walker. Two out single to center. He will adjust. He'll use the whole field. He uses the middle part here. Got a pitch in the middle and hit it right back through there. And now Russell Martin. He was 0 for 4, the opener. His first game with Pittsburgh. Slowly hit. And Gonzalez goes on the first. A two out single, that's it. And he had played two. Nothing, nothing.
from Robbie and Smikowski. Well, the Pirates yesterday had an off day. And what do a bunch of baseball guys do on an off day? Well, they go to a hockey game, of course. And it was led by a group including Neil Walker and Russell Martin. They went to watch the Pittsburgh Penguins and Buffalo Sabres face off last night. Garrett Jones and his wife Cassie right there. Travis Snyder, Michael McHenry, Chris LaRue with the green and gray hat on backwards right there. A good time was had by all at the ball game. Russell Martin was a big uh, part in, uh, he was instrumental in organizing this get together. Russell Martin is from Montreal, Canada and a lifelong hockey fan and uh, walked around, talked to Dan Bilesma, Simone Dupre and a bunch of the Penguins players. And uh, Russell Martin is getting into this uh, Penguins hockey right now, um, Greg. And when you, uh, Greg and Bob, when you look at this, he's uh, been tracking the Penguins from spring training. He was long looking forward to this day and he's going to go every chance he gets to watch the Penguins. Hopefully it's a long playoff run for the Penguins and Russell Martin and the rest of, uh, rest of the guys can uh, go watch a little more hockey. So, Robbie, uh, Russell is acting as the reporter there in uh, the dressing room. And as you said, uh, a lot of fun ahead by all. He said uh, he really was not all that into hockey growing up. But he has gotten into it. And a base hit for Gonzalez. Berto Gonzalez starts the third inning off with a base hit to right. That will allow Edwin Jackson a chance to move him up via the bunt. We always hate the uh, the leadoff hit by the number eight hitter. It allows that pitcher to do something in a positive role fairly easily if he can get a bunt down. Edwin Jackson had five successful sacrifice bunts last year. It didn't seem like very many for a starting pitcher. He hit 228, career 200 hitter, drafted as an outfielder. By the Dodgers. And Gabby Sanchez on the Walker. Talking about uh, hockey and baseball, the connection. Well, don't miss a Bucks and Pucks doubleheader this Friday. Pens and Pirates play back to back here on Root Sports. Pens start off at 6:30. Take on the New York Rangers, Consol Energy Center. And then right after, the Pirates head out west. Take on the Dodgers at 10. Our Bucks and Pucks doubleheader starts Friday at 6.30 here on Root Sports. Now, runner in scoring position for Dave Sapelt. Off hit for Alberto Gonzalez getting the start at second base tonight. They are without Darwin Barney. He was placed on the disabled list opening day. Tough luck injury for their gold glove second baseman. Cut up his left knee, making a sliding catch in Houston on Saturday. Brent Lillibridge started at second base opening day. Lillibridge at third base tonight, and Gonzalez at second. And two and oh, that one is outside. Dale Swain, the former Pirate. You know, it was interesting to me uh, in this ball game. I didn't really think about it till right now, but one, he hasn't had all that much experience. You would think in these cold games, playing his whole career in Houston. And here he is out here tonight, one of the coldest games we've had at PNC Park. And he's got bare short sleeves, bare right? arms. I yeah. like that. Like, hey, this is not going to bother me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out in a short sleeve shirt and pitch my ball game. Three and one. On Sapelt with one out. Felt a ninth round pick in 2008 by the Cincinnati Reds. And a Coastal Carolina University. Close to Chantelier or something like that. I believe. I believe. And to shallow right, Garrett Jones. Two outs. Good strong throw to cut off, man. Busy for Garrett Jones out there. He's Got three putouts already. Boy, Bob, it's catching on already. Yeah, yeah, started. Now that's the extra yeah. large version. Yeah, well, that's uh, for 
if you're really kind of cold blooded, you want one of the big ones. Yeah, well, that's yeah. if you're not on the air. Yeah. See, you're, you've got the adjustable on air version. Well, see, I'm, you I'm the headset. I'm undercover here. Yeah. I don't need that really big one. And if it does get really cold, the flaps will come down. <laughs> the flaps will come down. Oh, my. That is great. That is really good. Starlin Castro takes ball one. Two eleven in his career against Wandy Rodriguez. At two eighty three last year, with fourteen homers, drove in seventy eight runs. Starting his third full season in the big leagues, and the sky is the limit for this twenty three year old native of the Dominican. Yeah, think about that. He's already has so much experience at the big league level, and he's only twenty three years old, and already has become one of the uh, elite shortstops of the league. Could be looking at some kind of a career. Already two All Stars, 2011, 2012, two All Star appearances for Castro. A fly ball hit well to right, but get, get another one, Garrett. The track, Garrett Jones. It's his night. How about that? Four putouts already for Garrett Jones. on our new series Sunday Night Classics. On this week's episode, the Pens clinched their first ever trip to the Stanley Cup Finals after defeating the Bruins in Game 6 of the 1991 Conference Finals. Here from Peter Taglianetti, Peter Taglianetti, Phil Bork, Bob Berry, and Paul Steigerwald while you relive this unforgettable game Sunday Night Classics Sunday at 7.30 on Root Sports. And Barmas leads off the bottom of the third. Nothing, nothing ball game. Barmas three for 11 in his career against Edwin Jackson. Oh. One ball, one strike. Oh, man. That's looking good over by the Budweiser bow tie bar area. They got a number of those. Uh, Call them fire towers. I don't know what else to, to call them. They got the big flames coming up to, through the middle of them. Look at that. Ooh. Looks like to be sitting next to one of those. Yes, one of those right yes. here in Could the you booth. Go get us one of those, please. Yeah, put right here in the booth. A hot chocolate in one of those fire towers, please. Towering in front of. Of tweets and we 
invite you to do the same. Hashtag Bucks Booth. We'll get to them. We'll get to our first one here momentarily. One ball, two strike. Count and still one and two. Andy Rodriguez on deck. Clint Parmas in his second year with the Pirates. Signed a two year free agent contract before the 2012 campaign. Two balls and two strikes. A happy couple, huh? A Bucks fan, a Cubs fan. Somebody's going to go home happy. Always seems to be a pretty good amount of uh, Cub fans uh, when the Chicago comes in town. Cubs, one of those teams, I think, that, that definitely have fans all over the country. To the count. Seeing a lot of pitches. Three and two, and this is something that Barmas uh, is trying to improve upon this year, especially the first half. I'm talking about seeing a lot of pitches and he has uh, on base percentage up. Really struggled in his first half last season. Jay Bell. New hitting coach popped up. And playable. Jackson likes to throw that 3 2 slider. He's done that a couple times tonight. Brought to you by ATT. We check out this tweet. How will Wandy's WBC experience affect him for the regular season? Well, yeah, I believe it's got to be a positive because he pitched so well down there and he's already been out there and uh, he's got a little head start over everybody else. Been out there in a, in a game that's serious. Not, you know, veteran pitchers, guys in their 30s that are already on the team, you know, starters, just, it's exercise for them. AJ did most of his work over at minor league camp this year. Uh, but Wandy, he was in, in games that, that mattered a lot. I mean, those guys really play those uh, baseball classic games for keeps. They got a lot of adrenaline pumping. Uh, this start for him here, it's got to feel more like it's the second or third start of the season for him. He's already into it. Two starts. It's very well. One run in nine and a third innings. But but the, again, the other side of the coin is that uh, he's always pitched well in April. So you can say it won't have any effect on him at all because he's always been good beginning of the year. And it's three and zero. Oh. <laughs> Getting the coat ready, Ray Surge. <laughs> Ray might not like those bare arms out there. He, might, yeah, he, he wants to get up. that coat on, yeah. doesn't he? Well, you know, the entire time that Barmas had that real long at bat, yeah. uh, Wandy was in the on deck circle, on bare arms yeah. the entire time. And I'm sure that Ray was like, "Please put a coat on. Take it off when you get in the box." Rodriguez switch hitting hitter four for 61 last year. Do northern born players have an advantage over southern born players like Andrew McCutcheon in cold weather? Monty from the Dominican Republic rounds this one to second. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, a good question I, I, that I, I can't really answer except for personally. I was born and raised in Southern California. I love pitching in cold weather. So, you know, I, it certainly wasn't a disadvantage to me. I, I loved it. You know, but I, I loved it because of the position I played. Maybe if I was somewhere else out there, I wouldn't have been so happy about it. So I, I don't think that you can really, uh, you know, pigeonhole somebody like that. I think it depends on the individual. I, I, I've seen guys uh, that you know, are from New Hampshire. Uh, Mike Lavalier. I mean, he, he didn't like cold weather at all. He moved to Florida as soon as he huh. could, and 
and he grew up in New Hampshire, and I, and I hear it gets cold up there. So, as you say, Bob, though it, it does it, to this day doesn't seem to affect you at all the cold weather. <laughs> I love it. You could tell. Yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't. Well, you know, I love cold weather because so, I like putting on a coat, you know, yeah. and a nice hat. Yeah. You know, I, you don't get to do that, uh, you know, T-shirt and flip-flops all the time in SoCal. By the way, one of our tweets said, Bob Walk reminds me of John Candy in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. <laughs> Another tweet said, that Cubs player there looks like somebody from Blue Man Group. So we're getting a lot of good tweets. Keep them coming. Yeah. That was a good movie. Yeah. I like that movie. Was, like that, better a, there that was one or, of the uh, best movies ever. No the, the, the one where they, they rented the cabin on the lake. Was that, uh, that vacation? Glass loves the cold, too, of course. A roller to the right side. Starling Marte is retired, and the Bucks go down against Edwin Jackson. Nothing, nothing. The first time during the off day, 20 pitches reported feeling okay. His next outing will be Friday as he progresses from a broken humerus in his non throwing hand. So he's doing a little bit better. Still no date set for his return to possible action in the rotation. So here I am hanging out behind the Cubs dugout. Bob Walk, look who I found here. This is Ed Young from Butler County, a man who is possibly wearing your hat, or maybe you're wearing his hat, Ed. Bob Walk wearing the same exact hat now since we put you on television. What kind of feedback have you received? I a lot of people were just happy that we're here, but it's cold, so I had to wear the big hat. And people are <laughs> tweeting us their questions using the hashtag Bucks Booth. Now, what does it mean to you to have this similarity between yourself and Bob Walk, a Pirates great? Oh, we're just having a lot of fun, but uh, Uncle Bob Walk, we met a long time ago here. You remember that, Uncle Bob? Oh yeah, that's where we talked about the, you know, the kind of hats we liked. Uh, <laughs> he said he remembers you discussing. Go ahead, Greg. It's a pop-up, a broken bat fly ball caught by Andrew McCutcheon. Go ahead, Robbie so and Ed. Ed uh, Bob said that he remembers the discussions that you had <laughs> regarding hats. How'd that go for you? Is this your, your favorite hats? Your favorite hat store? It's like where the big hats. Big hats. He's wearing these seats. How about this? These are his brother's seats that he's in tonight. Had these seats since the 50s behind the opposing dugout. So he's brought his two kids, son and daughter, and his wife here hanging out at the ballpark having a good time. A lot of good hats. And his there. son got a baseball, too. I, I wanted to wear the big hat, but I got to wear the, the headset, and it wouldn't fit over the big hat. I had to put the thin one down. Two versions. The, the big hat that's yep. Ed Young, and as he said, Uncle Bob Walk has the, uh, the headset version. Uncle Bob, I, that, Uncle that Bob. might have been another John Candy role, wasn't it? Yeah. Uncle something. Uncle Bob, Buck, that's yeah. it, yeah. By the way, that movie you alluded to earlier was The Great Outdoors. Yeah. With John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. Oh, I, was, I love that. Yeah. That is going to get a lot of attention. Uncle Buck. I mean, uh, <laughs> Bob makes but a fashion it's... statement about once a month on Root Sports. and At and least it's it. not electric yellow. Yeah. Well, that was a couple <laughs> years ago. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, again, the guy I think that's going to have a problem with this, and we're going to have to check with Bill. Bla I mean, Steve Blass. Yeah, I think uh, Steve is, St Steve will have to outdo me tomorrow. Night. He'll, he'll have some kind of hat on. He really dictates in terms of the hats we wear. He's who we follow fashion-wise. Yeah. There's not much doubt about that. And he gets Soriano. That is his first strikeout, Wandy Rodriguez. We we're talking about that matchup, about how Rodriguez has really owned him, and what a good fastball hitter Soriano is. And right here, four seamer upstairs, swing and a miss. Aside from the sacrifice bunt, that was the first out recorded. We saw Wandy yeah, last year. Strikeout. Uh, Throw a, a few more forcing fastballs than he had in the past. Kind of evolving a little bit, maybe as a pitcher. So I'm, you say more? Last more more forcing fastballs last year than he had in the past. And, and guys do they as they their career goes on. And they, even though you're you're in your 30s, you, you change things the way you do. And I, I won't be surprised to see Wandy this year. You know, even change a little bit more because this ballpark is so different than what he was used to his whole life with that short left field fence and now left field is 10 miles away so that's gotta make him pitch a little bit differently to these right hand hitters popped up again and Gabby Sanchez makes the catch 10 fly ball outs for Wandy Rodriguez zero so far is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go box. It's a nice Barrel Automotive team leader stat. Look at the Pirates leaders OPS from last year. And Garrett Jones second behind Andrew McCutcheon. Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. Struck out. His first time up. Phil Garrett's a little unsung every year. It does a lot for the team. Well, throughout spring training, we thought going to be involved in a platoon situation at first base with uh, Gabby Sanchez, and that if he were in the lineup, he would likely be at first base, and Travis Snyder would be in right. But uh, for the foreseeable future, this is how Clint Hurdle is going to play it. And there's a gap shot cut off by Soriano. And Garrett Jones goes the other way. 
a fine defensive play by Soriano. The throw wasn't handled at second, but that doesn't matter. It, it, once the throw is coming in towards second, that stops the runner. And going with that fastball off the plate, just right on the black. Goes the other way, drives it. So yeah. leadoff man on it for the Pirates. Yeah, Greg, he, Garrett Jones was supposed to be a, in a platoon situation at first. I wonder if it'll be more of a platoon situation now in right field. Does this mean more playing time for Tabla? See how it all works out. We might see as early as tomorrow how that all plays out because yeah. the Pirates will see a lefty Travis Wood for the Cubs tomorrow yeah. afternoon. It, it seems like we're always talking about these things. Wonder what's going to happen this that and. It's always changing. Yep. You know, that's the, the thing about the baseball season. The lineup evolves. It, you have guys that don't perform up to snuff. Or, you know, you have some injuries you have to deal with. So nothing ever gets etched in stone. It's ever changing. Still with that uh, shift on, despite the fact there's a runner at first, there is no one on the right side of the uh, infield now with the first baseman Rizzo holding Jones. Right side of the infield is completely empty. Punch and struck out in the first. In the wow. dirt. That was a nice walk. Wellington Castillo, the block. Pretty impressive. That ball hit way out front. Now 2 1 count on McCutcheon. Only 20 base hits to right field. That's why they've got everybody moved over. Another pick this time by Castillo. And Jackson uh, all of a sudden has kind of lost the touch on that slider. Get anywhere close. Yeah, Edwin Jackson, you know, over his career, has been at times erratic, even when he pitched that no hitter in June of 2010. He walked eight batters that night. 149 pitches, June 25th, 2010. Strike three and two. How about he's all over the place with his slider and then throws one three and one and Paints it in there nice and easy. Of course, that wasn't really a good bites uh, slider. That, that was just a little spinner that he's trying to throw for a strike. Now, we've seen him on several 3 2 counts tonight. In fact, I think one of them was to McCutcheon earlier where he has stayed with that slider. Uh, McCutcheon's strikeout, I think, was on a 3 2 slider. Or was it on an 02 pitch? Very similar pitches, 3 2 0 2. I can get him confused. <laughs> See what he does here with a 3 2 count on McCutcheon. Throw over to first base. Garrett Jones got back. So they're paying a lot of attention over there on a 3 2 count now to McCutcheon. There goes Jones, and it's fouled off. He went away from the fastball there in the 3-2 pitch. Bob, do you think these shifts play on the minds at all, these hitters? I mean, yeah, you see they, a they wide open to. side they of the right side. You to. think, man, I should try and shoot that ball to the right yeah, side of the I infield. Mean, yeah, you would. How could it not? You look out there and. Where you usually hit the ball, they have an extra man standing. It's got to bother you. Runner goes again. Line down the line in left field. And a fair ball. Jones will be waved home. 
And he will make it without a throw on the double by McCutcheon. And the Pirates have a 1 0 lead. Though it's early, it's their first lead of the 2013 season. Afraid to throw McCutcheon a fastball and kept throwing slider after slider. And this is a slider that ends up in the corner. So that's the thing when it's 3 2, nowhere to put a guy, your slider is not a good one. It's just a little spin job that you're just trying to throw it in there nice and easy. Just, just trying to get a strike on it. And it's really an easy pitch to hit. McCutcheon, his first ribby. As Garrett Jones went off with the base hit. It's one nothing. Now Alvarez. Big hefty swing. Looking at uh, some of the, the stats on pitches that uh, Jackson throws, it, staying with that slider in a full count is not an unusual thing. That he he goes with that slider much more than half the time when he gets full count. So he's uh, stayed true to form tonight. All in one on Alvarez with nobody out. In the dirt and Castillo couldn't find it initially. That might have been a rare curveball. Change up. Curve got to be a curveball. Here's the base hit uh, that drove in the ninth inning run of Carlos Marmol on opening day. Brought in Andrew McCutcheon. And a 3 1 ball game. That's how it would finish. Trying to at least uh, get Alvarez, or rather to get McCutcheon to third at least. Yeah, get out and pull the ball. Touch the third base. That's a tough pitch to pull. That was just a tailing fastball about three or four inches outside. J Bell keeping notes. Yeah, that might, the note right there might have been. Position where you need to pull the ball, you chased it down in a way fastball. Might ask him later, you know, what, why would you, you go after that pitch when you're looking to pull? I'm just guessing. That's that's something that I think hitting coaches will make a note of to, to themselves. That, you know, that you want to ask the players about you know the decision making process when they were at the plate. You know, what were you trying to do here? What kind of pitch were you looking for to get that done? And now, when you get the two strikes, now it's all bets off. You have to hit for yourself then. And he does the job. Got it done anyway. Well done by Alvarez. Touching now at third. With one out for Gabby Sanchez. Signed Edward Jackson to a four year, $52 million contract. Twenty nine years old, six three, two hundred eight pounds. Born in Germany, his father was in the army. Now faces Gabby Sanchez with the infield in. Sanchez flied to right in the second. Walker on deck. And in the dirt, and a pick by Castillo. How many of those have there been this inning? And and that was a fastball. That's why Castillo had to pick it. There's no time to get to your knees. Fastball bouncing way out in front of home plate. Jackson's control has definitely uh, left him this inning. Interesting look there as the third baseman giving himself a little extra room. Lillibridge back. 
And it's bounced to short and pass to Castro as the Pirates lead it two to nothing. Castro was thinking uh, home right away. Yeah, he was trying. He went to his backhand, uh, trying to set his feet to go home with that ball. And it just came up empty on it. Be an RBI E6. Watching, he'll turn his body. He's going to right there. He is setting his feet. He's going to try and throw home. It just came up without the baseball. That would have been close at the plate. Uh, it looked like from that view that uh, McCutcheon was going to beat it. A lot of errors, but young shortstops, that's what happened. They, they do that. You see it all the time. Dale Swain, his manager, at one time was a young shortstop. Is Swain that take, took over for Young at short? That might have been. I think, yeah, it was. I think it was. They moved you out to the outfield. He and uh, Robin Yount, the Hall of Famer, great friends. Despite the hunting accident where uh, Swain was shot in the ear by Yount this winter. 2 0 the count. Ian Walker, two out single in the second. Two and all. And now it is three balls and no strikes. Wandy Rodriguez is allowed one hit, no runs. Pirates lead two to nothing. Trying to stay warm. Best way to stay warm in the dugout is no. sit in the clubhouse. Don't even involve the no. dugout. Right now, it's hard to do here though because clubhouse is a long ways from the uh, from the dugout. Well, there's a four pitch walk. Now, th this inning, you, you can see it. He is Jackson's throwing nothing like he did in the first three as far as uh, his command of his pitches. Bucks and PNC Bank teaming up to bring you discounted PNC check card dates every Friday and weekday matinee game this season. Tomorrow, Bucks and Cubs, matinee game. All PNC Bank customers using their PNC check cards get up to $10 off outfield box, lower outfield box, outfield reserve, or grandstand seats. Purchase tickets at the PNC Park ticket window or visit pirates.com slash PNC check card. Tomorrow, Bucks and Cubs concluding game with this brief opening homestand. 12.35 first pitch. Expected to, to be a great day. Chilly night, but the Pirates lead two to nothing. There's Basio, the pitching coach, out. 68 pitches thrown by Edwin Jackson. Gave up a leadoff hit to Garrett Jones. And then on the 3 2 pitch with Jones running, McCutcheon doubled to the wall and left. Jones scoring. Alvarez moved McCutcheon. Uh, grounding out to the right side, and then with the infield drawn in, Gabby Sanchez hit a ball that scooted under Castro's glove for the second run, and now the four pitch walk to Neil Walker. Well, the way Wandy is pitching tonight, uh, get one more run out of this inning, I think we're, we'll be feeling pretty good about ourselves. Wandy has it going tonight. Two count now on Russell Martin. Martin grounded to Gonzalez at second, his first at bat. Hit 211 with the Yankees last year with 21 homers. Two for 11 lifetime against Edwin Jackson. I think he's going to throw another fastball here, Greg. On an 0 2 pitch? Yep. Boy, you called that one. Oh, and 
Jackson no. does not get the call there. Oh, Gypsy's called that one. The Gypsies have Big Blue working down the oh, stairs. Huh. They know what's coming. Now, what's Big Blue? What do you mean? Oh, it's a Bloomberg Sports uh, pitch. Uh, Rolling to the right side. Rizzo to second. To first, they will not double up Martin. Remember last year we had it? We, we used it on air. I remember it very, very well. Blue, blue, it was Big Blue versus me. And yes. And trying to predict the pitcher was going to throw. Computer against Bob Walk. I understand we'll have one of, uh, yeah, another one I, of those I, nights. I understand the later. computer has challenged me again. All right. When it warms up, we'll do it. Huh? Look forward to I'm, that. I'm too cold to be at my best right now. Yes, sir. My brain power gets turned down when I put this big hat on. Marmus fouled out in the third. An extended bat for Barmus in that third inning. I don't get like Jackson. He'll make some good pitches and then he'll he'll miss by three feet. And, you know, we're not talking about breaking ball like that last pitch. That was a snap hook fastball. Castillo's doing a nice job catching some of these, keeping them off the backstop. They got fastballs bounced two feet up in front of home plate at least once. at bat look at the pitches thrown to Clint Barmas. First half of last year Clint Barmas drew only four walks the entire first half last season. Well, one of the things when you're scuffling like he was uh, you, you really don't want to go to two strikes you want to get the ball put in play and if, he was probably reluctant to take any strikes. Two and one. And to, to see deep counts, you have to have you know, no fear of, the, of seeing strike two. You know, of taking strike two. The guys that aren't real confident up there, they're the first good pitch they see they want to get the ball put in play there. They, they don't want to go deep into account because they don't have any confidence that they can deal with strike two. And they'll end up seeing strike three because of it. A little inside out little pop shot that is going to be caught wow. nicely by Rizzo and shallow right. Cub first baseman. Pretty play the Pirates score two times and lead two nothing.
games have begun. The Pirates drop the opener, but lead here two to nothing. A chilly night in the Berg, first night game of the year. Andrew McCutcheon, Garrett Jones, scoring the first pair of runs here tonight. Look at the Clemente Bridge. Hope you'll make your plans to come out tomorrow, or if uh, you're not able to do that, uh, but the Bucks will be back home for uh, an important long home stand following the week long road trip to LA and Phoenix. A return to host the Cincinnati Reds a week from this Friday, a three game series. Then the Cardinals are in for three, and then the Atlanta Braves. Ten fly ball outs for Wandy Rodriguez. Bob, you're talking about. What a different yard this is compared to Minute Maid, where he pitched all those years and uh, maybe using this yard to his advantage. You can see how much uh, room there is out in the left field uh, where the right hand hitters are going to be lifting a lot of balls, and it, it certainly is not like that in his old ballpark. One of the shortest left fields that you'll see that, that where the Crawford boxes are. And he can afford to throw some high four seam fastballs here and give up a lot of those high, especially early in the season when it's cold like this. The ball is not going to be traveling quite as well. Ooh, a little uh, change up action. First one of those I've witnessed tonight. Not that I'm keeping count, but I think that was his first change up. Pulled foul. Still two and two. It was a very good catch, though, wasn't it? Whiffed on that one. Strike three call. Nice Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile Index. Look at the uh, National League's active leaders in innings pitched among lefties coming into tonight. Wandy Rodriguez atop them all. After uh, he has gone four and a third. If he's tied, can you say atop them all? Well, he is now. He's atop them all because that was coming into tonight. Oh. And there's Garrett Jones again. Put out number five for the Pirates right fielder. Paul Mahalam, by the way, is also pitching tonight for Atlanta. Former Bucko, former Cub. We saw Oliver Perez. Uh, he's with the Mariners. You see the Mariners in a home and home series this year. What that Seattle comes here, the Pirates go to Seattle. 0 and 1 on Alberto Gonzalez as Wandy Rodriguez looks for another 1 2 3 inning. He retired the side in the second and fourth innings in order. Pitcher on deck. And he's feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, 1 and 2. Early on, he talked about all those fastballs he was throwing out. He's starting to break out that hook with a little regularity. Struck out Castillo looking on that curveball on the inside corner. We usually, uh, we'll use both those pitches about the same as far as percentage wise. Another breaking ball fouled off. Ball two strikes. Wandy Rodriguez is 34 years old. Pirates traded for him at the deadline last summer from Houston. You see his pitch count now at 63. And another strikeout for him. Took a little off that one, slowed it down a little bit. Got Gonzalez way out in front.
have a lot of folks wanting some of that horse. It's, it, it's in the back right All now. Right. Heating up. Very good, comrade. Pirates leading two to nothing, going to the bottom of the fifth. Some more tweets about the hat. I like Bob Walk style. Ed Young's Bob Walk's hats are outstanding. You've sold me. Where do I get? Where do I get one of those, Bob? Let's pick that bad boy up. St. Petersburg. Oh yeah. yeah. Florida? No, no, Russia. Brunch. <laughs> oh and two on one D Rodriguez. There it is with the borscht. <laughs> you know that this is not going to be far away from oh, me yeah, tonight. I know. So. Got to go for it. Where do, where do I get that hat? Keep those tweets coming. Yep. We really enjoy them. It's something we're going to do a lot of this year. Hashtag Bucks Booth. Randy Rodriguez down on strikes. There's Ed Young. Uncle Ed. The big version. Yep. He doesn't have the, the, the ear things. He has this. I had to wear the cut down right, version. Yep. I'm going to get me one of those. Go one sit those. by that. Mm -hmm. I know, I know a place that sells those. Oh. I was looking at uh, those this winter. Well, can you work on that for next opening day, opening series? They we'll look, be fine tomorrow. The, the thing about the, they look a little dangerous to have here in the booth, though, don't they? Uh, not with Dash. I think we'll be fine. <laughs> oh. They do look warm. Stage manager extraordinaire. And gloves at the same time. This was a shark tank, I'd be all in. Yeah. Amazing the ideas people come up with. Two and two on Marte. He has struck out and grounded out. Jackson struck out the first three batters of the game. Another one in the dirt. The fastball, yeah. too. That's what really is amazing to me is he, he misses so far with the fastballs. I wonder if the weather's starting to get to him as far as the feel of the baseball coming off his fingers. But the slider still seems to be pretty decent. Chris Basio, his pitching coach. See, overall, the, the ball strike ratio is pretty good tonight. Talk about that uh, unusual no hitter he threw June 25th, 2010. I remember the Diamondbacks walking eight, seven walks in the first three innings that night, threw 149 pitches, a one nothing, no hitter. Bullpen action. You know what I think I'm going to look up, Greg? For next, is it's interesting to me. In the last 50 years, what's the average amount of base on balls during a no hitter? Last 50 years. Yeah, just to kind of cut it down, my work. Below, below. Two outs. You think it's a bunch? Well, I think it's probably more than you would, yeah. you would uh, first guess. Easiest way to make sure you get tickets to all your favorite matchups and promotional games with a Pirates 10 game ticket plan. Choose from three pre selected plans that include all the biggest games. Enjoy the year long benefits, including early access to PNC Park, ticket exchange privileges, bonus games, and much more. To get your 10 game plan, call 1 800 5 bucks or visit pirates.com. Tomorrow afternoon, homestand concludes. Here's Garrett Jones with two outs, nobody on. He singled to lead off the fourth. So now, this is one of those situations where that side is open for a base hit, but the game situation calls for him to swing the bat. Jones, you know, he's got good power and, and everything. There's no reason for him to go ahead and bunt the ball over to that side of the infield. 
and take a single. He wants to hit the ball over the fence with two outs or into a gap, get a double, especially when you're the team that's in the lead. So right now, because the left side is open to him, that, that makes no difference. He wants to swing the bat. If you had the same at bat and you were down two to nothing and you were leading off the inning, then go ahead, bunt a ball hard that other way, take the base hit, get yourself to first base, try to build a an inning. And, and that's what you know there, you were showing Jay Bell there, and that's one of the things that Jay talked a lot about uh, before spring training, in fact, was the uh, situational type hitting. What are the game plans stepping in? What, what are you trying to do with every at bat? And they change as the game goes along. Not necessarily where your hands at. Yeah, not you know, the mechanics. This, yeah, that yeah. type guy. More about the the strategy of hitting. Kind of similar. You know, I could talk about the, the same type deal with pitching. Jones goes down on strikes. They'll throw the first to complete the strikeout. One, two, three for Edwin Jackson. Through five innings, still a two nothing Pirates lead. Wandy Rodriguez back on the hill. I was, I was, I had tears in my eyes. I was, I wanted it that much. Relive our region's most memorable games, our new series Sunday Night Classics. This week's episode, Pens clinched their first ever trip to the Stanley Cup Finals after defeating the Bruins in Game Six of the '91 Conference Finals. Here from Peter Taglianetti, Phil Bort, Bob Barry, Paul Steigerwald, while you relive this unforgettable game, Sunday Night Classic Sunday at 7:30 on Root Sports. Now a pinch hitter for Edwin Jackson, David De Jesus. Well, definitely is a good temperature for hockey. That's for sure. Ground ball, Walker. Now, ground ball alert. It's really the first true grounder. The other one was a be the sacrifice bunt in the third inning. Everything else been a fly ball or a strikeout. Andy Rodriguez, one out here in the sixth inning. He's back to the top of the order. It's a buck night. Folks are taking advantage of the dollar hot dogs. Some uh, tickets were available for just a buck. Check all that out on Pirates.com. All the promotions. And the remaining home schedule. Dave Sapelt takes strike two. He has fly to center, fly to right. And another strikeout. Bad looking swing and a miss by Sapelt. Four strikeouts now for Rodriguez. Pondy's the per perfect example. You don't have to throw the ball 95 miles an hour. 
to get ugly swings like this on your fastball. You just got to set them up with those first two pitches. Have good command of everything. It's all about location. Sapel, fourth strikeout victim. Castro has flied to right twice. Slices this one out of play toward right. Definitely trying to go that way again. First start as a Cub for Edwin Jackson in those five innings. Not really a bad start at all. Maybe a, he got to the point where he threw a few more pitches than he wanted to as his control started to deteriorate in the fourth and fifth inning. But still a, a good start to build on for verse one. Talking with his catcher, Wellington Castillo. One ball, one strike count. And now one and two. Really has uh, some of these Cubs hitters uh, so wondering they, what he's going to throw next. They think, oh no, that's a high fastball, and boom, it's a curveball that drops right there. Oh, in <laughs> on him. Oh, wow. It's all location. Wandy Rodriguez. What a start. In tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. Monty Rodriguez back in the dugout. He has set down 12 straight Cubs. Good looking line right there for him. I got my Miller uh, keeping warm on ice. Yeah. David DeJesus stays in the game to play center field. And making his major league debut, the Rule 5 pickup, Hector Rondon. Selected from the Cleveland Indians system. Last season, much of the year injured. So as he begins his first season with the Cubs, ninth overall in pro ball. Originally signed by the Indians as a non-drafted free agent in August of 2004. Had Tommy John surgery on his right elbow in August of 2010. So the major league debut for Hector Rondon. Hitter going to be one of the best hitters he'll face. I would think if you could pick, it, it, you'd always want it to be somebody, you know, a name type guy, somebody that's going to be memorable no matter what happens. Probably same thing with hitters. They want to go up there with their first big league at bat. Have it off the name. 
Three balls, no strikes. Well, Rondon certainly facing a name player, and Andrew McCutcheon, who last time up doubled to drive in the first run. Brought in Garrett Jones. A four pitch walk. Well, we won't want to remember that no. too, too, too much. Now, is this a running situation for McCutcheon? I mean, we talked so much about it in spring training. Well, really, to be honest with you, with McCutcheon's speed, just about any situation for him should be a running situation. And that, that's the kind of speed he has, but what we have seen, especially last year, that he's just not getting those great jumps. As you can see, just not confident enough to take some chances and then get that good aggressive lead and, and take off right at the very instant he needs to. Now he stole second in the ninth inning with one out and the Pirates down three to nothing. And he's one for one early. Pedro Alvarez at the plate and Castillo out to talk to Rendon. And you know Andrew McCutcheon. He wants to be, you know, really one of the all-time greats. I mean, he, that's the kind of player he is. So, I'm sure he would love uh, to become a big-time base dealer and add that to what he can already do on the baseball field. A bluff start by him. An aggressive first step and then shut it down. Strike one on Alvarez. Whatever Sofield, Rick Sofield just said to McCutcheon, got a chuckle out of it. New first base coach Rick Sofield this year. Nick Leva back in the third base coaching box. And again, the shift on for Alvarez. Nobody at third. Just a lob toss over there by Rondon. And not a real big lead to, at all there with McCutcheon that time. Two quick steps. He was already back at the back. Stopwatch. Base runners, they like to know how quick or how slow a guy is to the plate. It's very important to them when they're thinking about stealing. One ball, one strike to count. On Pedro Alvarez. There won't be a first base coach in the league that doesn't have a stopwatch in his back pocket. A little bit further that time had to come back on his belly. One ball, one strike count. And now two and one. And another thing, uh, Greg, if, if McCutcheon does become a a very big base stealing threat. Somebody that you know the pitcher really has to worry about more than now. Then that means that the guy at the plate is going to see more fastballs. And right now he sees the fewest amount of fastballs in all baseball. We had that stat earlier. That's a great point. Uh, Another reason why I'd love to see McCutcheon on the move more. For the listeners, the, the reason you see more fastballs is because it's all about that time to home that I was talking about earlier. If you're throwing the fastball, obviously you're getting the ball to the plate much quicker and giving your catcher a chance to make a throw. There's a fastball and looked like it was uh, right at the top of the strike zone. Pedro did not make contact with it. Watch it. It looks like this has a little cut action. Rondon's yeah. first big league strikeout. Yeah, maybe it was just the ball didn't 
cut as much as I thought. Ooh. Alvarez down on strikes and the batter Gabby Sanchez. And fielders go back to their normal positions. Sanchez hit the ground ball in the fourth inning that went under Castro's glove. He got credit for the RBI. Ball one. Talking about the movement of the fastball, the uh, ball that goes to cut fastball when a right hander throws it is going to look like it moves slightly away from a right hand hitter or slightly into a left hand hitter. That's what they call a cut. If it goes the other way, that's more often than not, it's going to be a two seamer that has that good movement the other direction. Well, McCutcheon was going to go, and Rendon stepped off. You, you ever see anybody step off and look backwards? That's kind of odd, wasn't it? Yeah. He, he turned and looked over his right shoulder. One and one on Sanchez. McCutcheon stole 33 bases his first full year in the big leagues. Out of 43 attempts. When he first came up in 2009 he swiped 22 out of 27. And, and that. Is what he should be. I mean. With his speed those are the type of numbers. That you expect out of him. That kind of success ratio. Another look at the last pickoff try. Really not that close. I don't think that the cut really has a huge lead by any stretch of the imagination. I, it's just it's a decent lead, but he he's not really taking any chances. I don't know who, what what base dealer it was Bob that said might have been Ricky Henderson Lou Brock that your lead should be big enough that when the guy tries to pick you off it should be extremely close. Mm -hmm. In other words I guess keep widening your lead yeah, get, get more get more. Yeah, some the, the premier base dealers they take that as a. Great a challenge, challenge yeah. yeah. Three and one Tommy sent told me when Lonnie Smith first came over. There was a pitcher in Montreal that had a great move can't remember his name but. Lonnie got on and Tommy told him, hey be careful now this guy's got a phenomenal move and all Lonnie did was take another step. <laughs> that's all he needed to hear. He, right? he, he increased his lead when I told him that. But, oh really? Yeah, but that's, the, yeah. Yeah, that's the way those guys are. It's like hey I, okay we'll, wow. we'll see how good it is. What a jump he got. Well it's going to be foul I think. It's yeah. a long fly ball and actually it's not as long as I thought it was. Oh he got a great jump. Three and two. Oh yeah. No way was he getting thrown out. Three and two on Gabby Sanchez. With Walker on deck. Rondon very concerned with McCutcheon. Shouldn't have walked him. Just struck out Alvarez, but it's three and two on Sanchez, and there goes McCutcheon again, and it's a strike three called, and the throw down is right. not going to get him because it was dropped by Castro. Looked like it was going to be very close. Stolen base for McCutcheon. Yeah, it looked like uh, McCutcheon was going to be out. Yeah, McCutcheon might have been running on that three-two pitch just to, to stay out of a double play, so he's not going to take a chance and, and go for that great jump. Boy, it was a super throw. Oh, yeah, he was going to be out easy because he never even touched the base. Watch this, yeah. Greg. He never even gets to the base. If that ball is caught, I wonder if he knocked it out with his left arm as he went in head first. And that's one of the things that uh, we're going to have to be a little worried about this year is going in head first now instead of feet first on these steals. You're going to open yourself up to injury. Well, he was going to be out by a pretty good amount. 
are going to intentionally walk Neil Walker. That was the 100th career stolen base for Andrew McCutcheon. Pitch to Russell you, Martin. You don't like your catcher having to jump for your intentional walk pitches. Yeah. <laughs> so they put Walker on. Martin 0 for 6 to start his uh, Pirate career. 0 for 4 opening day and nothing out of 2 tonight. A couple of ground ball outs. Both to the right side of the infield. Pirates scored the two runs in the fourth. Now batting in the sixth with two outs and two on. Ball one. A ground out to second in the second and a bouncer to the first baseman Rizzo his last time up. Martin born in East York Ontario Canada. Ball one strike makes his home near Ottawa. Really enjoyed going to see the uh, Pens in the morning skate yesterday. He said uh, the second time he's gone to see the Penguins, he saw the Pens and the Caps a few years ago when he was with the Dodgers. When they were in town, the Pens were playing the Capitals. One and two. So Martin, good years with the Los Angeles Dodgers, a three-time All-Star, Gold Glover in 2007, when the Pirates signed him to a two-year free agent contract worth some 17 million dollars. 30-year-old Russell Martin. Soriano for the final out of the sixth. Still a 2 0 Pirates lead onto the seventh at PNC Park. Not overpowering, but he has never feared the fastball. I mean, it's always been his friend. Uh, he, you know, 52% in 
2011, so that's more than half. He throws fastballs. Last year, he upped that 55%, 62% as a pirate last year. And tonight, he's thrown over 70% fastballs. So he's really a great example to really young, young pitchers. You don't have to be overpowering to use the fastball extremely effectively. You just have to be able to have command of that pitch, to throw it where you want, to set it up. And he has done that. There it is. 71% fastballs tonight. They're very efficient. The, the fastball makes you an efficient pitcher. Yes. Fastballs fouled out of play by Rizzo. When you're throwing a lot of breaking balls, you're getting in a lot of deep counts most of the time. The fastball will allow you to get some quick outs occasionally. Bunt try by Rizzo. Well, this is what we're talking Pirates about. Pirates have the third baseman at shortstop, so Rizzo's leading off the inning down two. That's exactly what he should be doing here, but the one thing that, that I would criticize on that attempt as he was trying to bunt the ball like there was a third baseman in on the grass. Yeah, you can go ahead. And yeah, I mean, he didn't have to be that, you know, like he's laying down a drag bunt. He could square around early, bunt the ball nice and firm to the left side, down the third base side, and he's got his base hit. Wow. wow. Hit on the helmet. Man. Rizzo has been hit on the helmet. Got him on the shoulder. I was say it grazed yeah. his shoulder first before it hit him. In the helmet. Coming up and in with a fastball, heading the count. I think it hit the bat, right? Really? Yeah. I think it went off the shoulder and it hit the bat. I don't think he got his helmet. Alfonso Soriano now at the plate. With Rizzo aboard. Nobody out. I have amazing ears, and that was the sound of the ball hitting it. Well, my I, my uh, ears are not way. great. I thought it sounded like a yeah. helmet, so I apologize. Oh. I wonder if the hat impairs Bob's hearing or whether it improves it. It, it works like a filter. Filters out noises that I don't need to hear. Oh, kind of like Big Blue. Filters out the bad numbers. 0 and 2 on Soriano. Soriano does not hit off speed stuff well. And does not hit Mondi Rodriguez well. At 79 pitches so far. He's gotten Soriano twice tonight, a fly out to right and a strikeout. That Soriano, regardless of his lifetime numbers against Wandy Rodriguez, dangerous hitter, 32 homers last year, 108 runs driven in. His best season as a cup. Age of 37 now. Rips that foul. Got an 2 fastball pulled. 70 feet foul. What do you do? Well, Wandy will probably come back with something, you know, like this, the curveball. But a lot of pitchers here will go to that little changeup down the way. 
comes back with the curveball and uh, just didn't get a call. Was that ball caught the outside corner? I think it came in. Here it is. Far enough. Nothing Pirates. A one two count on Soriano. Hold foul. So it stays one and two. Soriano coming off one of his better seasons. Turned down a lot of trades. Uh, the end of last year, I wanted to stay in Chicago. With the you no know, trade clause. Turned down apparently a couple of uh, trade opportunities, including rumor has it to Pittsburgh. Still two years left on the deal that he signed, a big contract. Now the seventh year of an eight-year deal. Cubs still owe him thirty-six million dollars. Two and two. Yeah, Dale Swaim has nothing but high praise for Soriano. So he's never seen a player work harder. Great with the youngsters. Young players, I should say. Probably good with kids, too. Oh, yeah. Well, home runs last year. Playing Wrigley Field, you're expected to contribute with long balls. Still two and two on him. Nobody hit more homers than Soriano after May the eighth, right behind him, Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew McCutcheon hit his first. And it's a base hit. First and second with nobody out. So that'll get the uh, phone ringing in the pirate bullpen. First little bump in the road tonight for Wandy. Breaking ball. Curve ball trying to bring it in over the outside corner. Soriano this time able to stay back and not pull it foul. Two on for Scott you can, Hairston. You can see uh, in the background on that shot that we had of the ball going into left center that as it was hitting the grass in the pirate bullpen, those guys were taking off their jackets. They knew that that phone was going to ring with a base hit. Jared Hughes and Tony Watson, righty lefty. Before Hairston steps in, he talks to third base coach David Bell. Here comes Ray Surridge. Pirates pitching coach making his first trip to the mound. Rodriguez had retired 12 in a row before hitting Anthony Rizzo to start this seventh. And Soriano, the base hit to left center. Scott Harrison has twice fouled out to first baseman Gabby Sanchez. Does it feel like it's warming up? It does. Yeah. Seriously, it feels to me like temperature just dropped about three degrees in the last five minutes. Yep, you can see it uh, really feels warmer down there. <laughs> you have to dress for the way. You know, Pittsburghers are, they don't mind bundling up for a sporting event. That's just part of living here. Ball one. You know those blankets that have the armholes in them. What do you call those, Greg? 
Snuggies. Yeah. Get some Root Sport Snuggies yeah. up here. Better yet, Root Sports Snuggies. I thought, no. <laughs> okay. One ball, one strike on Hairston. I'll remember that. Hairston, a 368 career hitter against Wandy Rodriguez. I could definitely use a blanket right now. I have to drop the ear flaps down here. So. Yeah, I want to see that for long. See if Rodriguez can get a rare ground ball. And in the dirt, two and one. Try and get that curve ball down on the shoe top. So maybe get it topped. Two balls, one strike. The count on Scott Harrison. And two on and nobody out. Harrison, the previous two years with the Mets. We'll see his brother Jerry Harrison Jr. this weekend in Los Angeles. Good career numbers against Wandy Rodriguez, though he's 0 for 2 tonight. Big strike there, 2 and 2. Bench coach Jeff Bannister there. Clint Hurdle behind him. 2 2 count. Oh yeah, Ooh, struck him out looking. Location. How about the, luck of the last two fastballs? That's pitching. Again, and not an overpowering pitcher. He throws in the high 80s most of the time. And these last two fastballs just picture perfect. Well played, Monday. Well played. Now Wellington Castillo. He has flied out to center and struck out looking. Cubs catcher. Turned 26 years old later this month and he like Wendy Rodriguez a native of the Dominican Republic. Two on, one out. Two nothing Pirates. And he hits another batter to load them up. Now they are loaded with Brent Millibridge coming to the plate. He's been doing a great job pitching inside with that fastball. Just in a little too far. Rizzo hit by a pitch is at third. Alfonso Soriano singled into left center field. He is at second base. And now Wellington Castillo at first. No place to put Brent Lillibridge. Lillibridge has popped to short and flied to right. He was 0 for 3 opening day, struck out all. Three times to the plate. And he takes strike one. He had a real tough time uh, getting around on the fastball opening day. Former fourth round pick of the Pirates in 2005. Lillibridge was traded to the Atlanta Braves along with Mike Gonzalez for Adam LaRoche. Now it's 0 and 2. Traded twice last year from uh, the White Sox. He was involved in the uh, Kevin Euclid deal. And then to Cleveland a month later for a minor league pitcher. Line to left. Just foul. Thank you. That was not a good spot for an 0-2 breaking ball with the a game on the line, tying run at second base. Need to make a better pitch with that. He's talking to himself right now. Ball hooking uh, in the foul territory. After Wandy gets this one back, you see him muttering to himself. He can't leave that 0-2 pitch up there like that. Not in this Ooh. situation. 
Got to put that ball in a better spot. He, he's been so good with his control tonight. Doesn't want to let a mistake now hurt him. He gets a second chance at Lillibridge. Look at the, the, the fastball percentage down 60% just since we were talking about it. It was up well into the 70 percentile. Now it's down six. That tells you he's been going to the breaking ball now, which is something that he will do. First time through the lineup, he really overwhelmingly through his career has been a fastball guy. And as the game goes along, he will mix in more and more of those curveballs. Missed badly with that fastball. One and two. Days one and two, approaching the 100 pitch mark. And now it comes Russell Martin. Talk things over here with Juan D. Rodriguez. Last year, Juan D. Rodriguez averaged just over 96 pitches per start. I don't think there's a single pirate, Greg, that's sitting down in that dugout. They're all on their feet now. You want to get that first win under your belt as a team. Everybody can kind of take a deep breath, relax. That's such a excellent pitching performance from that man tonight. The hook, baby. Hook. Paul and left. Thank you. Gotta talk to him, Greg. You do a nice job, Bob. Well, I mean, it's, that ball could have easily stayed out in fair territory if you don't talk to it a little. Oh, bit. I know. I, I didn't want to disrupt you. So you gotta get it to hook in. It, you can help. No, no. You I didn't help. want. I, I wanted to make sure you didn't have to filter any of the bad stuff. Oh, through my. Yeah. <laughs> I want those flaps down before too long. Now. Get close. <laughs> I wish I had flaps for my feet. That's a freezing. Still one and two on Lillibridge. Good striking out looking on a fastball inside corner. Greg. All right. Strike him out looking on an inside fastball, inside corner. Inside corner, come on, right there. Oh. Two and two. Mm. I like the way you were thinking, Wandy. Then execute the pitch. What do you think now, Greg? Try it again, double up in no, uh -uh. Here comes the curveball. You think? Yep. I like to see him double up in there. I don't like the way Lillibridge has hit the curveball hard down that left field line. I don't think he can hit the inside fastball hard. I think the best he'll do is be able to fist it somewhere. Oh, gonna go away. Pop them up. Stay in here, stay in here, stay in here. Just out of reach. Four rows back, maybe, for Gabby Sanchez or Lillibridge making it tough. Still two and two. So, you know, that fastball was out over the plate, and he still didn't get to it. I think something on his, on his hands, that's got to get the job done. But uh, and you, you can have a great plan, but, you know, on a cold night like this, you've thrown 100 pitches, maybe you, you're, you're starting to lose a little bit of that command out there. Not as easy as just saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Because if it was that easy, there'd be about 8 million big league ball players. Maybe more. Another important pitch, 2-2. Two, two. He's, he's trying to nail that inside corner with the fastball. He took two shots at it. He knows that's the pitch he needs to make. But he just hasn't been able to do it. Both pitches have, have just gone inside. Just not quite the control that he had throughout the game up to this point. No place to put Brent Lillibridge. A 2 nothing Pirates lead. One out. 
could be the last pitch of the game here for Wandy Rodriguez. And Martin wants to talk to him. Clint Barmas will join in, or at least listen in. I think Wandy wants to throw a curveball. Mark wants to throw a fastball. But Bob, I, I so see Barmas. Barmas was saying something. Does, does an infielder ever get involved in anything in terms of pitch selection? Is it always just the catcher and the pitcher, or, or could an infielder come in and say anything, make a suggestion? Well, they could, but I've never had I mean, it happen. I guess in, in your when you pitched, would guys do it? I, I mean, would. It, I would laugh. Yeah, that's what I figured. Andy in center field would yell pitch selection yeah, at him. That's what I figured. He was always wanting to call pitches from center field. Would would he ever like when you're on the bench come back and say? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at me, or yeah. you, know, you know, all the time. He, he was always wanting to get involved in that. Well, I wouldn't take advice from the catcher. Why am I going right. to listen yeah. to the center fielder? Not. Three, two, pitch. He got him. Right, that's what Wandy wanted to throw. He wanted to throw that hook. I don't think he was confident in the fastball, being able to throw it over the plate. He knows. I mean, that hook has been his bread and butter for a long time. And that's where he went. Got him, and that will be it for him. Clint Hurdle is going to go to the bullpen. He freezes Lillibridge, and fans loved it. Paid crowd of 27,667. Look at the uh, the strike zone on that last pitch. It caught right at the very top of it, right on the top edge. That ball broke down just far enough. Uh, six and two thirds innings of shutout ball so far. He leaves with the bases loaded. Oh, he's uh, an outstanding game. Really, very strong with that fastball early on, just moving it wherever he wanted, up and down in the strike zone. And basically, this is what Wandy does. This is how he has been the most, you know, one of the most effective left-hand pitchers in the National League over the last half dozen years. This is what he does almost every start. He goes out there and pitches you into the last three innings with the lead or real close to it. Now it is up to Tony Watson. It's his uh, first appearance of the season. This is Alberto Gonzalez, who had one of the two hits against Wandy Rodriguez. Fine season last year for Watson. And falls behind 2 0. Uh, 
Didn't, didn't Shut down for much. a time in spring training. Didn't pitch much in spring. Left-handed hitter David De Jesus on deck. Three and one. Gonzalez taking all the way. And he's probably going to be really just kind of key holding on this next pitch. Side corner pitch for strike one. He'll be looking at it. This a certain spot. It's got to be there for him to swing. That's on the outside. Half the plate. Three and two. Two outs. Bases loaded. This one just paints on the outside corner. Him up. Walker out. McCutcheon calls him off. Wendy Rodriguez, six and two thirds shutout innings as Tony Watson leaves them loaded. Fans, it's time for the seventh inning. Now take me out to the ball game. Seventh inning stretch time here at PNC Park. Smiley Cookie and join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we sing. Take me out to the ball game. And this game tonight, Pirates shutting out the Cubs two to nothing. Going to the bottom of the seventh inning. Related to happy birthday wish. Karen Hoffman, great uh, Pirates fan, season ticket holder. Birthday yesterday for Karen. As Michael Bowden appeared in 32 games last year. Hey, hold up, Greg. Not bad, Bob. How's the hat? Good. Yeah? Good. You think it's funny that I'm getting a little chilled? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Big Hat. Oh, yeah, you are a little. You're like you're, you're leaning back, laughing at me that I'm going like this. <laughs> and, and why shouldn't I be when I look at you? Should I be like this? Yeah, you should be cold. Yeah, we're kind of indoors and we're freezing. What's everybody out there doing? Huh? Uh, the only other warm guy besides me in the house. <laughs> why come Ed hadn't dropped the flaps yet? Waiting for you. Bar 
Jarvis has fouled out and popped up to shallow right. And Nerizzo made a nice play on him. Through the line and left long run for Soriano. That is going to drop. And then bounce over the wall for a double to start the seventh as the Bucks looks for, look for insurance. It'd be nice to get that third run up there. You're talking about that play that Rizzo made. That, that kept the third run off the scoreboard, if I remember right. Rizzo caught that uh, ball over his shoulder that Barmas had hit. Excellent way to start an inning. See how Tony Watson does. He has two big league at bats. He should be bunting right here. Jay Bell really working with these guys. This spring. One of the better bunters in baseball for a time. Jay Bell and works to move the runner 90 feet. Sacrifice. Three, four. Also oh, known as over on that third base side, you can see Rizzo, <laughs> how quick he was in there. That's why you cannot bunt the ball to first. Our AGH cam giving a great look at the excellent bunt by Watson and Rizzo way in there. Now Marte, the infield in. Out. Ball one. Marte 0 for 3 has struck out and grounded out twice. A double and moving to third on a sacrifice bunt by Tony Watson. Two and one. One of the things that uh, you learn as a young player in, in these situations here, even in a 2 0 count, you're not going to get something late in there for a strike. They don't, no big deal if they walk you here. You have to show some discipline at the plate. Even when you're in a, a head in the count. Bounced into left field. An insurance run as Marte picks up his first. RBI of 2013. Three nothing Pittsburgh. Pass the drawn in infield. That's why you love to hit that infield drawn in. Infielders really have no range. Anything firm is, is going to sneak right through there. AGH camp showing that that ball was just off the tip of the glove. How long will he stay at first? Yeah. Just wondering the same thing. How uh, quick will Marte be to try and move up 90 he, feet? He loves to run. There he goes. Taken for a strike. The throw down. Got him. Wellington Castillo. <laughs> Pretty strong throw right on the money. It had to be there. It was still bang bang. No argument at all from Marte, though. He must have uh, felt the tag before his hand hit the back. Oh man, that was close. The tag uh, was a lot higher than I thought. Watch where the tag is. Oh, definitely out, though. Took a perfect throw to get him. That's what it was. Garrett Jones. That won't slow Marte down. Though, nope. Huh? I'll be back at it again. Yeah. Extremely aggressive on the bases. Saw that Short last time year. in the big leagues last year. 
12 out of 17 in the stolen base department. Garrett may have been guessing strike on that one. Forty five career home runs here at PNC Park for Garrett Jones tying him with Brian Giles for third on the all time list. Broken bat bouncer to first. The final lap of the Bucks pick up an insurance run. On to the eight three nothing Pittsburgh. Sports tune in every weekend for a new episode as we follow your buckos off the field and bring you an in-depth look at the Pirates 2013 season inside Pirates baseball presented by Allegheny Sports Medicine debuts Saturday at 8 on Root Sports. The new right fielder is Travis Snyder. Getting hot now. Right? It is getting warm, isn't it? Oh, there's another good hat. At the flaps down. I like it. Fire tower. Greg has taken off his coat, as you can see. It's warm. What, yeah. What's wrong with you? Oh, now, now Greg, I, I want you to, to sit like that until the game's over. Yeah? No, I'll, I'll don't do it. Don't be putting your coat back on. Now. Don't be telling me. Don't I, I might. I might put the coat on. No, no, you're not putting the coat back on. Now. It's not that bad out, you've, actually. You've, you've you made see. a statement, so sure now we'll, we'll right. see if you can yeah. Yeah, roll the sleeves up. Yeah. There you go. You look like Wandy. <laughs> <laughs> David De Jesus at the plate. There's Ross Morgan. I like the Mohawk look. That's yeah. Nice. The Cub look. We seem to be showing a lot of Cub fans. Tony Watson. Retired to Jesus. So we have a pinch hitter. Yana Navarro. Navarro switch hitter. That looks like a cold spot. Uh, Mount Troy, you call that right? Yep. Troy, the cameraman. It's our top dead, of the mountain. Our dead center cam. It's a real good look at any kind of movement that baseball has. Looking straight in. <laughs> There's Troy. That's Jumping jacks, uh, looking into the true center camera. Popped up. Long run for Gabby Sanchez. He will not get there. Nor will 
Travis Snyder. Snyder probably very happy that he was able to run over there to the, get the blood flowing. I would think that the, that's the coldest people in the ballpark, the outfielders. They're just standing there in the grass, pitch after pitch, and that's really probably why Wandy tried to give him so much action. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Sure. Knew that they were yep. going to be rather cool out yep. there. Brown ball to shortstop. Barmas. Two outs. So uh, three up and three down for Tony Watson. He retired Alberto Gonzalez with the bases loaded. And two outs in the seventh. Got us a little nervous there with the 3 0 count with the bases loaded. Came back, made a couple of really nice pitches after that one. The inside corner, outside corner, got the last out. And now he's cruising. And now Starling Castro, who has flied to right twice and bounced to second. Wandy Rodriguez went six and two thirds. No runs on two hits. Strike one. Two outs, nobody on. In the top of the eighth. Game two of this three game series. And 0 and 2. Got him one, two, three in the eighth, and that's four up and four down for Tony Watson. Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Three nothing ball game go to the bottom of the eighth. Pirates try to even this first series of the 2013 campaign. Grind out ball game. So the Bucks scored twice against Edwin Jackson in the fourth. Picked up a run in the seventh off Michael Bowden. And now Sean Camp, who last year appeared in 80 games for the Cubs. 359 ERA, one time property of the Pirates. Back in 2003, he came to spring training as a non roster player with Pittsburgh. He had been acquired a couple of years before that. 
from the San Diego Padres organization for Emil Brown back in 2001. Sean Camp. Andrew McCutcheon has struck out, doubled in a run, scored a run, walked, and stolen a base. Always oh, had high hopes for Emil Brown. He had physical tools very similar to uh, McCutcheon's as far as what he could do running, throwing, speed, power potential. Popped up on the infield. Rizzo. One out. McCutcheon. One out of three. Turns to the bench. It'll bring up Alvarez to face Camp. Jeff Karsten's on the disabled list. Talking there with AJ Burnett. Jeff Locke under the hood to Burnett's right. He'll pitch on Sunday. James McDonald will start tomorrow. He's seated there. With the hood. Russell Martin over by the heater. Ball one strike on Alvarez. 0 for 3 tonight. Couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Though his ground ball in the fourth inning moved McCutcheon from second to third, and McCutcheon would score when the infield uh, was drawn in. Gabby Sanchez hit a ball under Sterling Castro's glove. Went for an error, but it was an RBI for Gabby Sanchez. Tony Watson, great work out of the pen. Line drive past the shift over the head of the second baseman, Gonzalez. Spinning breaking ball after breaking ball at him. Left that one up and hit hard. Brings up Gabby Sanchez. He contrast that to the to how Wandy Rodriguez. I mean, he he might want to get somebody out with a breaking ball, but he still throws them a lot of fastballs. He just makes sure he puts the fastball in good spots, puts them on that inside corner, put them on the hands. Just because you want to get somebody out with a breaking ball, you can't just throw one right after another. Because if you leave one up, I mean, they're, they're going to hit that just as well as anything else. Especially if you've seen three or four in a row. You got to be a little, a little careful with the scouting reports. You can't just go to you know whatever this guy supposedly is doesn't hit very well. There he is, new closer, yep. Jason Grilly. Hoping this is a for great scenario. Chance, yeah. Get out there right away here in the second game. You're going to have a three-run lead. You wanted to see happen tonight. Now Jason, uh, in his role the last couple of years, he's used to a, a lot of regular work. You know, it didn't make any difference winning, losing. As long as the game was close, he was going to see some action. And he's going to have to get used to this year. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> waiting three or four days maybe to get into a ball game because he's only going to see action in the ninth inning with a lead. So I'm glad that he's getting the opportunity to get out there sooner than later, so he doesn't have to wait around for that first save opportunity. Concerned about Alvarez. A couple throws over there. Ball, two strikes, one out. Pulled foul. This day is a ball and two strikes on Gabby Sanchez. The 
Got the RBI in the fourth. For his first hit, 0 for 6. So far, the first couple of games. Last year, hit 217 combined, the Marlins and the Pirates. It's Russell Martin. Just reaching out and popping this one up. Should be easy for Rizzo. That's out number two. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Pirates baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Pirates.com for details. Dale Swain is going to call on a left hander. To turn Walker around. Two outs and a man on in the eighth, and that'll be it for Sean Camp. Bucks leading three to nothing. Walker will face his third different pitcher tonight. For more, uh, Jason really the new closer is ready, and now Isonori Takahashi, who was picked up by the Pirates in uh, August of last year after he was let go by the Angels, and he did not pitch well for Pittsburgh. His numbers combined with the Angels and Pirates to see on your screen. Pitched in nine games with the Bucks, gave up eight runs in eight and a third innings on ten hits. Coming up on next half inning, Jason Grilly will come on to try and close it. Rizzo, Soriano, and Hairston, their career numbers against Grilly. Rizzo, first baseman who homered on opening day, uh, opening day, and Soriano, who tonight is one out of three. Hairston, 0 for 3. Those at bats against the starter, the lefty Wandy Rodriguez. Neil Walker. Singleton walked against the starter, Edwin Jackson, and was walked intentionally in the sixth by Hector Rondon. When was the last time Pedro got this much attention? I don't know. Time. The same thing happened the other day. Opening day, they threw over quite a bit. I'm not sure. That's all about. What? One one on Neil Walker. Fourteen homers last year for Walker, sixty nine runs batted in. Ball 
one strike. Takahashi went to camp as a non-roster invite and signed a minor league contract with the Cubs in January. Three major league seasons with the Mets, Angels, and Pirates after 10 years pitching in the Japanese Central League. And that is going to be caught by Gonzalez in shallow center field. So it will remain a save situation as the new closer comes on, Jason Grilly. Park and it is Jason Grilly. After all these years, finally getting a chance to be a closer. The age of 36. Definitely uh, could be classified the late bloomer. As he is uh, pitching his best baseball well into his 30s now. Signed a two year free agent contract over the winter with the Pirates. Re signed with them. Six point seven five million dollars. Bucks picked him up, of course, you'll recall. After he was released by the Phillies in July of 2011. And what a pickup he has been. Former first round pick of the Giants back in 1997. Jason Grilly facing Rizzo, Soriano, and Hairston. He does have three saves to his credit with the Pirates. Of course, he was used those occasions when Joel Hanrahan needed a rest. And ball one. Yeah, the Pirates have a, a shift on, but they leave at least on that first pitch. You see Alvarez moving back now, but they left Alvarez in. On the edge of the grass on, on that first pitch. One hop shot diving stop by Walker. Neil Walker robs Rizzo of a leadoff hit. And that shift works. You get the second baseman way over in the hole. That certainly should have been a base hit. But there's Walker there to make the stop. But down by three runs, the Pirates initially wanted to make sure he wasn't thinking about doing what we talked about earlier, laying down that easy bunt for a free hit. Wanted to make him swing the bat. Make him hit into that shift. Strike one. Soriano one for three against Rodriguez. Two. 
I don't like you, Greg. Get toward the end of the game, you start taking stuff off. Well, you said it was getting warmer, like in yeah. the fifth inning. Yeah. Oh, and to the count. And he struck out Soriano. How pumped will he be when he gets this last I was time? just about to ask you whether, even though he has three career saves with the Pirates, two last year, and it one doesn't the matter. Year, this, this is, is different, right? This is definitely a different. He is the closer right. now. This will this be will special feel for him. And he, he, he's one of those guys that likes to show some emotion out on the diamond anyway. I, every time, even in the eighth inning, you, you know, you could see that he's really all pumped up. Getting this first one here tonight, first win of the season. It's going to be special for him. He'll, I'm sure, keep this baseball. Nate Shear holds bats for Hairston. Strike one on Shear holds the former giant. Did he? They'll feel it. This is going to be some pirate town. Huh? Look like really wanted a foul tip call. Oh, but he was clicking his uh, bare hand over top of his glove. I think that's what I saw, and it was awfully close to a foul tip. One ball, one strike. Steve right two. Flags ready. Really trying to save it for Rodriguez. Raise the Jolly Roger. Jason Grilly, an emphatic save. One, two, three, and out. Giving uh, Martin some of the best uh, knocks in the chest protector that he's gotten all night. He's, he's fired up. Hopefully that is uh, the first of many saves this year. Tremendous start from Wandy Rodriguez. Great relief work from Tony Watson. And a 1-2-3 ninth for Jason Grilly, the new closer. And the strikeout of Sheerholtz. Save number one. And a good location for that last fastball after all those sliders breaking in on him. The fastball down and away. Perfect pitch to him. The, but really is a perfect game tonight. The Bucks blank the Cubbies and are now one and one on the young season.